I'm CK. I haven't disassembled anything in a while and I just had to get a new uh, tire pressure gauge so I figured I'd take the old tire pressure gauge apart and see what's inside and let you all take a look just for fun too. Uh, obviously I think we've got a pressure transducer, some type of circuit board, the display and a little switch. But we'll see what else might be in there and we'll see what else we may be able to harvest for future use. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's the little fella and it's slime brand, you know, the guys who make the stuff to seal tires with, though it's probably OEM from a lot of other, or from some random manufacturer. So we've got, looks like five screws. We'll take that out first. I've had this for somewhere between five and ten years, so it is certainly uh, put in its duty. So I'm certainly not complaining about how having to replace it. Uh, the symptoms were it just was not resetting. So on my uh, truck it was reading 39 pounds no matter what, even though the internal dash pressure was showing 36. And when I got the replacement gauge, it was showing 36 too, so it had taken a set somehow. Oh, there's no screw in there. There's no screw in there. Is there a screw in there? There's something in here. Interesting that there's no screw in that hole. Let's see what we got. There's something in here. I can't really see what it is. No, it's a screw all right. And it is... A cross tip, Phillips, something like that, even though this is not. Yep, somebody's buzzing me on my phone. Let's see who that is. Greenfield, California. I don't want to talk to anybody in Greenfield, California today. The other screws came out just fine. This one's not coming out very well. Let me grab another screwdriver. There. That one got purchase. I don't know if this rubber strip here is. It's probably glued on, so I'll probably have to peel that off as I get this last screw off. But it may come out when the clamshells come apart. Okay, let me dump the screws out. And now we'll open her up. Nope, I didn't have to. Oh, it's two. It's actually two pieces. Okay. Ooh. Battery it was... Oh. Oh, look at that. Huh. Okay, so there were two batteries. And they're captured in these two little holes. And they're picked, the sensing was the, <coughs> excuse me, not sensing, but the, oh, and the metal thing across the top to bridge them to have a full circuit. And there's a wire here, a jumper here, that it's sitting on top of. And this one has a jumper on it too. And if you notice, there's corrosion. Maybe these batteries just went uh, south on me, even though I was getting a display. So the batteries were not dead. But the batteries definitely have failed. They've uh, done their acid leak kind of thing. Now if you look at the circuit board here, there's the little rubber cap for the switch. That's a standard tack switch. Cheap as heck. Uh, oh, this was built 11-22-2010, so longer than 10 years ago. Gosh, I didn't know I had it that long. I don't know how long it was sitting on the shelf. You notice this uh, wire shows a great deal of corrosion, and that's where the battery was sitting. And if you'll notice, we've got different jumpers. This is for a lithium 3 volt. This is for lithium 6 volt. And then over here, it looks like you could put a 2032 button type battery case there and have to do that jumper. That's interesting. So I'm going to pull the rest of these screws out and take a look. And that's not going to work. 
That is going to work. Oops. Oh, and while we're here, before I take it completely out, this is a little LED and a plastic uh, plastic sheath kind of thing that lights up the nozzle pointy thing. That's a big old LED. It's not in the sheath. It's the whole LED. And why you need to light up the nozzle thing, I have no idea. No, There's no sense to that because seeing the valve stem is going to be the least of your worries. Seeing the display is what you care about, but valve stems I mean, it's really hard to hide them where you'd need a light to find them. Okay, this should all pull out now, and it does. Oh, here, here's the LED for the uh, display. Oh, and there's more batteries. Gosh. So it takes a total of four. These are all mercury-free. They're, uh, oops. They're L1154Fs. They're showing a lit. This one's showing a little bit of leakage, but that was interesting. Four batteries. That's a lot. Here's the display module. Well, if that's the display mod. Oh, I see. So uh, it's got a zebra connection between the circuit board. And the display, this is common on things like this. If you take apart one of your uh, digital voltmeters, you will see uh, that type of connection. So this is the shroud that the, uh, the, the LED here goes into. And it's a little white light box to give even illumination to the display, and the display is here, and you probably have seen these. So here's the display, a little liquid crystal display. Let me hold it up to the light, see if I can see any. Now there's no templates on it, but this is conductive rubber. Let me pull it all the way off. Uh, conductive rubber, and if you look closely, let me see if I can zoom this in so you can see. You can see bands. There's a conductive band, an insulating band, a conductive band, an insulating band, all the way along. So this conducts the signals to the display, and it's very resilient. You don't have to, you can bang this around, nothing's going to come loose, it's all rubbery. So that's that. I don't know if we can do anything with this display. We can play with it maybe later to see if we can get it to light up. So here's the pressure transducer. So there's the air inlet. There's no transducer directly here because it comes over and this goes around this and this is our pressure transducer. It's got uh, one capacitor, surface mount capacitor, then a little chip, and then the diaphragm that is actually sensing the pressure. And we've got two zero ohm surface mount resistors, jumpers, there's another zero, couple of capacitor, a capacitor there, capacitor there, 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 there. 10 ohm. There's a there's a transistor there, and of course the light for the display, as I mentioned before, and a couple of transistor. I mean resistors that have actual resistive value, and all the intelligence is under this epoxy right there. The switch is man. Whoever soldered this is not very good at soldering large stuff there. Pretty good at soldering the surface mount components, but those big globs of glue on the switch are uh, could be redone. 
This is a really cheap fiber circuit board too. So what else can we do with this? Let me fire up the meter and put a little power to the LED. Can we see that? Did I zoom back out enough yet? Yes, I did. So this should light up that LED hanging in the air there. Yep, there it goes. See the little green? i got to take a look up the top to see if you're picking that up. Yeah, you can see that. And then this one, that's a green one. This should be a white one. And the circuit board is marked with the polarity. Oh, that's green also. Can you see that? Yep. Oh, come on. Can't tell if it's focusing. My camera is so far overhead that I can't really see it all that well. But that one lights up, so we can harvest those two LEDs and see what we can do with them in the future. They're, they'll be fun. This pressure transducer, uh, so that's why it's, I mean, again, it's got two zero ohm resistors, which are, I mean, effectively jumpers. I don't know why they're there. There's a lot of uh, schmutz from the batteries leaking. I don't know if I can do anything with that pressure transducer and the switch. These things cost like seven cents a piece, so I'm not going to harvest them. So that's it. There you go. That's the inside of a bike or automobile tire pressure gauge. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at that.